Hey everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about issue number one of X-Men Before the Fall First Strike, written by Steve Orlando, but before we dive into the story, I want to say thank you for watching my videos and leaving great thoughtful comments down below to help the channel grow. For without all your help, I wouldn't be doing this. And I'm happy to be bringing some value to my viewers, thank you. The anti-mutant organization Orcus has launched its next offensive against mutant kind spreading anti-mutant propaganda and fomenting dissent among any would-be supporters of Krakoa. But despite the growing unrest, there are still those who need help beyond what humans can offer, and mutant kind doesn't turn their back on those in need easily. So with that said, this issue opens on a peaceful day, much like any other day. For in the city of Milford, New Hampshire, people live their life free of worry. Until out of the blue, a massive explosion goes off in the heart of the city, rattling the nation to the core, completely devastating the entire city and setting the tone for everything else to come in the future. For all over the world, this disaster was seen as an act of mutant aggression. And some even went as far as to call it a Krakoan dirty bomb that was carried out by a mutant attacker. Now this attack was of course physical, but it was also electromagnetic as well as viral at the same time. With this triple threat befalling this city, the people affected by this traumatic experience couldn't help but to wonder if the attacker that did this deed was actually dead, due to the fact that mutants have the power of resurrection. So with the power out, comms dead, food spoiling, disease spreading, constant floods, and emergency services being down, the people of Milford is not in a good place, and by the looks of it, in time the situation would get only worse which is why Bishop stands before the council today, because he believes that due to the nature of this attack, he sees no other options but to intervene in this highly televised situation due to the fact that this was either a mutant attack that did this, or at least, made to look like it was one. Now the way he was planning on going about doing this was by putting together a field team to lead the response to A, clear their name, and most importantly, B, to help the people of this poor city. So with his case before the council, they approved his request and gave our war captain full access to whatever he needed to carry out the task with one simple goal, to help them. Now, this situation is key for the mutant's image, so Bishop informs his team that they must be benevolent ones. For this is more than just a marauder's activation, this is all hands on deck, because within this hour, the destruction, the damage that is seen resembles something that would take weeks to accumulate. And because of that, these people are hurting, scared, confused, and angry at them in particular because they were hit hard by whatever that attack was. But ultimately Bishop's goal for the team is to show the people, especially now, when they see the red and white X, they see friends. So with that said, we see Bishop leading a powerhouse team made up of Jean Grey, Storm, Cyclops, Iceman, Tempo, Penance, Triage, and Angel. Now with X-Corp out in full force, they will have their work cut out for them to do what they have to do. So with that said, we shift over to the Bloom Station over Earth, where we see Judas the Traveler asking for a report narrative on the situation. And through that, we learn that this attack was no mistake, but rather a custom X-Gene attack made by Orcus, and within the first five hours since detonation in Milford, the infrastructure, sanitation, health, and safety is critical, and all the viral agents are active. And the way they are pulling this off so fast is because it is all accelerated by their chronokinetic plug-in, which as you may have guessed speeds up the effects. So with everything going according to plan, phase two of the attack was about to begin, with Judas calling for the dogs. So with the dogs en route, we jump over to Tempo talking to Penance, while Thea is holding up a force field in order to keep people away from the discovered bones. For Tempo finds out that this set of bones was emitting a temporal nudge that made hours of disasters feel like days. But luckily due to Tempo's understanding of time, she was able to cancel the effects of the nudge and stopping the flow of accelerated effects. So with the skull contained, Penance and Tempo goes on to discover that the X-Gene was custom and assembled sloppily and never meant to last, for it degraded quickly, which caused this disaster. So speaking of disaster, the dogs attempted to run down on the city but were quickly stopped by Cyclops and a squad of mutants. But despite their engagement, Bishop points out that it was still important to maintain the relief efforts. So with Cyclops and a small detachment holding off the waves of war dogs, Bishop and his team continued to support where they can. One way they went about doing that was by dispersing the biotoxin gas from the air by using Storm's power. So while everyone was doing their part, 
Tempo and Penance continue to examine the skull, where they found out this patchwork of DNA and mutant abilities were never meant to last. For Orcus used a poor individual to act as an unknowing weapon, so with a series of tweaks the two were able to create an image of the man who passed to show the masses, not to use him as a person to blame, but to show them that he is a victim like everyone else. So with the truth out there, Tempo promises the people that she and the people of Krakoa will find those who were responsible for doing this crime. So with the declaration out, Storm approaches the lead dog in an attempt to stop the battle between them, but unfortunately, the boss didn't really care to listen to her. For he and his dogs truly believed that the mutants were responsible for what happened there. In fact, it was so bad that he told Storm the only way she could help is if she stands still and allow him to run her down. So in an act of self-defense, Storm blew up his bike, sending him flying in the air, and just like an idiot, the lead dog used her act of self-defense as validation for mutants wanting to kill everyone. So with the Krakoans running out of options, Jean Grey decided to take all the members of the watchdogs around her and lift them into the air, until they could find a way to deal with them without killing them. And while she was doing that, Jean discovered that these individuals really believed that the mutants were the ones responsible for the attack. So if this was a false flag operation, then these watchdogs weren't in on it. And to be honest, much like Milford, the watchdogs were also being used as pawns. So with the watchdogs defeated and left chasing their own tails for hours, we transition over to Storm and Triage dealing with the sick and injured. In fact, we see everyone just doing their part, trying to heal this broken town, from Thumbelina doing microsurgery to Wicked allowing people the opportunity to get closure by saying goodbye to the ones they lost. So with the hearts of Milford won over, the mayor of the town went on the news and stated that this wasn't a Krakoans who attack, and in fact, the Krakoans were the first people to help them in their time of need as well as promised ongoing relief. But no matter how much the people of this city believed in the mutants, the mainstream news had other ideas, for they still pushed the notion that the mutants were the ones to cause the explosion. It was so bad that they put the leader of the watchdogs on the news, where he could still push his agenda. Blaming the mutants for the attack and how they are responsible for everything going wrong. Because at the end of the day, people believe what they want to believe, and as of right now, the mutants are the popular ones to hate. So with that said, many people feel this was yet another act of mutant aggression, and they've got a right to believe it. So with that said, X-Men before the first strike comes to an end. So down in the comment section below, let me know your thoughts about this issue and what predictions you could have moving forward. So with that established, I hope you enjoyed this video and please don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you want to see more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.